My name is Dr. Edgar Tay from the National University Heart Centre. Today we're going to talk about a topic called TAVI, which stands for Transcatheter Aortic Valve Implantation, which will revolutionise the way we treat patients with severe narrowed heart valves, or what we call aortic stenosis. Patients with aortic stenosis who become symptomatic have very, very poor quality of life. In addition, these patients' survival may be limited. Most patients who have this condition can only survive up to about three years if they are left untreated. The current treatment of aortic valve stenosis up to today is uh, open heart surgery and many patients who are elderly at this point in time would have uh, difficulty undergoing open heart surgery because of the risk that they have. This includes things like previous kidney dysfunction, uh, previous heart attacks or previous other sort of comorbidities. Today we have a new ability to treat these patients and this is called TAVI or transcatheter aortic valve implantation. What this procedure involves is a minimally invasive procedure that enables us to deliver a heart valve which can be compressed into a small size and delivered either through the leg arteries or through a small incision to the side of the chest. This can be done in a catheterization laboratory and does not require the patient to undergo open heart surgery or even bypass. This is important because patients who are elderly often have a lot of uh, coexisting illnesses and may do poorly after open heart surgery. Although we have been treating older patients, younger patients who have severe coexisting illnesses resulting in high surgical risk or patients who cannot undertake surgery may also be considered for this therapy. These TAVI valves are specially designed to reduce the rate of degeneration. So far, patients followed up to 5 years continue to show good valve function. This valve has shown to be equally effective when compared to open heart surgery in high-risk surgical patients and is certainly more effective than medical treatment alone. Risk of this procedure includes vascular injury, strokes and need for pacemakers, but these risks are likely to be reduced with time. After the patient gets discharged from the hospital, the patient's symptoms typically get better, their shortness of breath disappear, the chest pain resolves and there is usually no further fainting episodes. These patients then can then go back to do their usual activities. In fact, most of them can do even more than what they could use to previously. We have had patients who couldn't swim or cycle after this uh, condition, but after treatment, in less than a week, they can go back to their usual recreational activities. And this has really improved their quality of life. Thank you.